Pitt here at the county ground. At number two, his partner, young Kevin Price. Kevin, 20 years of age, and his average is six points exactly. Moving on to number three, the ever spectacular Colin Cook. Colin, whose style is really suited towards this county ground circuit. Colin, now 30 years of age, but uh, still averaging eight points per meeting precisely, and indeed number one on averages for the extra side. Moving on to number four, a young man whose average is a little down below what uh, you might expect from him. It's Nigel Sparshot. Nigel's still only 23 years of age, but his average at the moment is only 6.77. At number five, Steve Bishop, 21 years of age, and his current form is 6.6 .6 per meeting. Moving on to the reserves. At number six, the Cornish grass tracker, one of the men who makes the most mileage in the year trying to get around the speedway tracks, Mike Simmons. His current average, 4.8 and I will say that most of those points are earned here at the county ground. Number seven for the Bridge Falcons, it's the son of former Falcon Bob Coles, Michael Coles, and his current average, 5.13, a very impressive figure indeed. Let's take a look now at the visitors on the uh, long tour down from the uh, from, Gla from uh, Scotland, rather, Glasgow Tigers. At number one for the Scots, it's their ever-popular captain. Number one, Steve Lawson, 27 years of age, a consistent points gathering machine for the Scots currently with an, an average a little down on known form 9.50 at number two is young partner who is now the third heat leader on average for the Glasgow Tigers Kenny Brailsford Kenny a Scottish Junior League product formerly with the Darville Rockets his average this year 6.4 that puts him third in the averages for the Tigers at number three Brian Collins the veteran rider in his 21st season of racing 37 years of age and currently riding on a 5.37 average at number four, replacing the injured Martin McKenna, it is David Cassells. David, another Scottish Junior League product, and he's moved up from the reserve berth tonight with an average of 4.78. At number five, the backup man to Steve Lawson, Andy Reid. Andy with a 7.03 average currently, again, a little down on his uh, usual figures. At number six, making his debut for the Tigers, and indeed, I think you'll find his first ever National League match, Edward Baldy. Edward's been second half at Eastbourne recently, but with the injury to Martin McKenna, Glasgow were there, in fact, yesterday, and they've uh, signed on Mr. Baldy now to back up the tail end. He's got the current two-point assessed average, of course, in his first meeting. At number seven, a man whose average I unfortunately have lost, so there's no figure there for Jeff Powell. Jeff, I think, if my memory serves me right, had about a two- or three-point average for the Tigers last year, but has only ridden one match so far this year for the Tigers. Former mechanic, by the way, I think you'll find, to Steve Lawson. So those are the Glasgow Tigers here tonight at the county ground. And looking at uh, the form on average for the two sides, Exeter are running at 50 points per meeting here at the county ground in league matches. Glasgow are running at 26 per meeting away from home, which does tend to suggest that Exeter might have things rather easy tonight. But on the other hand, unpredictability is the name of the game in the National League. Some of the best teams in the league have come down to Exeter and lost heavily, like Middlesbrough, 48-30, Hackney, 50-28, Ellesmere Port, 49-29. On the other hand, Birmingham won here, 41-37. And indeed, the week before Hackney came down here, Rye House got 30, which indeed was two points more than their more illustrious neighbours. So it's uh, all a little unpredictable here at the county ground, and who knows, Glasgow could well provide a shock. Of course, they do have a couple of riders out injured, such as Jim Beaton, Colin Caffrey, and Martin McKenna, but uh, the thing is, in National League, it's all unpredictable. Who knows what will happen tonight here at the county ground. Well, I said during the introduction that Steve Lawson's average is a little down, but uh, you wonder how, when you look at his recent scoring, 13 points at Canterbury, 11 at Milton Hall, 13 at Milton Keynes, and indeed had 12 at Eastbourne just 24 hours ago. And indeed, in the league so far this year, away from home, he's only failed to get double figures on one occasion. That was when he got eight points at Long Eaton. Riding in red for the Bridge Falcons, it's Robert Maxfield. Rob now with the Falcons for his uh, fifth season, signed in 1980 after a time with uh, several northern teams, including Bradford, Coatbridge, Newcastle, Workington and Scunthorpe. Truly a complete tour of the north of England. Moved down here to Exeter in 1980. Riders lining up now at the start for heat number one on the inside gate position in blue for the Bridge Falcons. It's Kevin Price next to him in yellow and black for the Tigers. Kenny Brailsford on gate three in red, Robert Maxfield. Gate four in white, Steve Lawson. So Exeter have won the toss. They're taking the inside gate positions for the opening race. Interesting to see how Glasgow goes. So much depends on Lawson, and he's made the start. Lawson leads into the turn. His partner, Brailsford, though, is at the back. These Scottish youngsters could struggle around this county ground circuit because uh, there are opposite ends in size as well as 
ends of the country because Glasgow is only a little tiddler. This county ground circuit is one of the largest, certainly in Britain. So leading its horse from second in red, Robert Maxfield. Third in blue, Kevin Price. Fourth in yellow and black, Kenny Brailsford. As you can see, we've got strong sunlight here tonight at the county ground. It does cause problems, obviously, when the riders go into the shade. Lawson now out in front, Brailsford at the back. I think this is going to be really the story for Glasgow tonight. Lawson against the Bridge Falcons, with all due respect to the backup, backup squad for Glasgow. Not very experienced on this size of track. But Lawson is doing the job out in front. Second in red, Robert Maxfield. Third in blue, Kevin Price. High speed circuit here at the county ground. It's uh, featured in the Guinness Book of Records as the fastest circuit in Britain. But I've amazed at the track record back in the late 70s. The winner in white, Steve Lawson in heat one. Second in red was Robert Maxfield. Third in blue was Kevin Price. And fourth in yellow and black was Kenny Brailsford. So Lawson does the job he's paid for, wins heat number one for the Glasgow Tigers. So the visitors share the points in heat one and the score after the one race is Exeter three and Glasgow three. Well, we now see Jeff Powell coming out to the line for heat number two. Jeff out of the side this year pretty well all through the season. Just one match so far. Rode at home against the Pool Wildcats, scored three plus two bonus from three starts. His fifth season, though, with the Tigers. Jeff, 23 years of age. Riding in red and blue for the Bridge Falcons, Mike Simmons in red, Mike Coles in blue. And uh, Mike Simmons with 28 points. Producing that 4.8 average. Best score of the year came against Rye House. That's on home form with 10 paid 11. But in recent weeks, down on the five mark against Hackney and Berwick in the knockout cup. Michael Coles had 8 paid 9 from 3 against Berwick in that cup match last week. So he's on form currently. He goes in blue, off gate 2. On the inside in white, it's the new signing, Edward Baldy. So across the grid, Baldy off the inside in white. Next to him in blue, Michael Coles. Gate 3, yellow and black, Jeff Powell. Gate four in red, Mike Simmons. This is where the extra reserves really do tell because it's Simmons who's out first, or rather Cole's out first. Simmons tugging into second place. Third in yellow and black, it's Jeff Powell. At the back in white, Edward Baldy. So the British Falcons getting the maximum points here in heat two. They can hold on. Simmons a little awkward around that turn, going out wide, spraying the crowd there on the scoreboard turn. Cole's picking up a little, going down into that bend. Coles now back with the British Falcons. Like Simmons rode with Weymouth last year with the Exeter in the British League last season. And indeed they had to fight over Mike Simmons to get him back into the side here due to contractual problems along the way. With uh, Weymouth now at pool, they were claiming Simmons was theirs and Exeter were saying that he was Exeter's. Well, the problem was resolved and he is tucking into second place here. He's not been used a lot away from home recently due to poor scores. They've been using Dave Roberts instead, but he certainly is consistent around the county ground. Out in front, though, in blue is his partner, Michael Coles. Father Bob, such a stalwart for teams like Milton Hall along the way, as, long, as well as Exeter. Now, indeed, serving fish and chips, would you believe, out of a mobile shop here at the county ground. The winner in blue, Michael Coles. Second in red, Mike Simmons. Third in yellow and black, Jeff Powell. Fourth in white, Edward Baldy. So a convincing 5-1 win there for the Bridge Falcons reserves, which gives us an overall score of Exeter 8 and Glasgow 4 here at the county ground. So the British Falcons getting the breakthrough there to open up a four-point lead. And the Glasgow youth looking a little a little all at sea, in fact, and on this Glasgow circuit, on this uh, extra circuit, rather. But it does tend to catch out first-time visitors or even those that just come down occasionally. It does, though, stress the uh, aspect of the National League that you do get teams all the way from Scotland racing right the way down here in the West Country and, of course, vice versa. And, indeed, you have to sympathise with teams like Berwick they were drawn here in the knockout cup, which meant that they had to have two trips right the way down here to Devon during the season. Of course, it does mean that uh, the British Falcons had to make the reverse journey up to the borders twice in the season. It does all go to show, though, how much travelling goes into a National League season. But a last-minute work on the bike there for Steve Bishop at the start, putting the cut-out loop over his wrist now. He lines up off. Gate one in heat number three. Next to him in yellow and black for the Glasgow Tigers, it's David Cassells. Gate three in blue, it's Nigel Sparshot on the outside in white. It's Andy Reid. So Exeter back on the inside gate positions. Now what is Reid going to do? Lawson's already won heat one. 
A lot of pressure obviously going on the heat leaders here tonight at the county ground. Andy Reid, just over the 100 point mark this season. Recent away form not too spectacular though, five at Canterbury, five at Milton Keynes. Blake played nine at Milton Hall. His best score of the year away from home was at Birmingham where he scored 10. Well, it's the British Farmers indeed who make the gate on the outside line. In blue, it's Nigel Sparshot. Behind him in red, Steve Bishop. Steve exiled to Stoke last year with the uh, Falcons in the British League. Back, though, for his now, he's counting them down, his third season with the Exeter Falcons. Third in white, Andy Reid. Fourth in yellow and black, David Cassells. So the Falcons now having it pretty much as they like. They're something like 30, 40 yards ahead of the Tigers. Third place man in yellow and black. Indeed, you can't see Cassells now when you look down. There he is with Andy Reid way behind in fourth place. So Exeter heading home for a very comfortable 5-1 here in heat three. Looks a little ominous for the Glasgow Tigers. So it's far shot, his spectacular style. Another one that is well suited to the county ground. Far shot with Oxford and Cheetahs in the British League last year. Started with Crayford back in 1978, had a spell at Milton Keynes and at Kings Lynn before moving on to the Oxford Cheetahs. And now coming in for the Bridge Falcons in Heat 3 for a win in blue. Nigel Sparshot, second in red was Steve Bishop. His partner going in for the bonus point. Third in yellow and black was David Cassells. And fourth in white. Andy Reid, so problems are plenty there for Glasgow with Andy Reid at the back of the field and by a good margin. So that gives us a progressive score now of extra 13 and Glasgow 5. It does look as if those predictions may be coming true here down in Devon, but uh, who knows whether Glasgow might mount a revival once the riders have got the taste for this county ground circuit. Lining up for the British Falcons now in heat number four, it's Mike Simmons. Paid win behind his partner Michael Coles back in heat number two. Simmons started his career with the Bridge Falcons back in 1983. Had that year at Weymouth last year, then uh, back to the county ground for this season. There's his partner in red, Colin Cook. Colin in his first season for Exeter after running for Boston last year. In the British League in the uh, years before that with Ipswich and Leicester prior to the closure of the uh, old Lions Stadium at Blackbird Road in the, the East Midlands. Started his career with Scunthorpe on loan from the Ipswich Juniors back in 1975. So it's now his 11th season in Speedway for Colin Cook. So the lineup on the inside in yellow and black for Heat 4. Jeff Powell next to him in red. Colin Cook, gate 3 in white. It's Brian Collins and gate 4 in blue, Mike Simmons. So Brian Collins has got plenty of experience in this circuit over the years since he first came down here in 66 with the Glasgow Tigers. And indeed, he's made the gate into second place, but it's Colin Cook who leads. And now the race is on for second place, going on the outside line, Mike Simmons, going around the outside now of Brian Collins to pick up second place. Collins third, fourth in yellow and black is Jeff Powell, so the British Falcons having to work for the 5-1 this time, away from the gate. Colin Cook making the start, and then Simmons having to battle past Brian Collins. So Simmons with a fine ride there, through into second place. Colin Cook well clear. In red. Very small rider, but uh, has quite a bustling style. You can see the legs back, and away he goes. Cook first by something like 20 yards. Second in blue, Mike Simmons. He'll be picking up the bonus point. Third in white, Brian Collins. Fourth in yellow and black, Jeff Powell. You can see how this county ground circuit is banked as they go round that bend, down onto the relative flanks of the straight. And then not long before you're back up on the banking again. It may be a long way when you actually look at it, but uh, it doesn't take much once you've got the speed up. So win in red for the British Falcons, Colin Cook. Second in blue, Mike Simmons. Third in white for the Glasgow Tigers was Brian Collins. And fourth in yellow and black, Jeff Powell. So Collins made the gate, but on the long run into the first turn, it was Simmons who got the power up to take the outside line and snatch first or rather second place from Brian Collins to give Exeter another 5-1. And now the score is Exeter 18 and Glasgow 6. And indeed, that's three successive five ones in races where Steve Lawson has not appeared. Indeed, the only Glasgow Tigers to beat a Falcon so far is Steve Lawson, by courtesy of that win in heat number one. Well, the Exeter crowd looking pretty happy, despite uh, it's certainly a one-sided meeting so far. 
but uh, the Falcons well on their way to a victory that will uh, take them up into the top half of the table. Exeter currently in ninth place with 14 points from 20 matches, Glasgow in 14 with 11 from 15. Pride is coming out to the start now for the heat number five. Glasgow 12 points down, desperately needing to start getting some seconds or even wins. But they've got the man to do the job here in Steve Lawson in heat five. His partner in yellow and black, Kenny Brailsford, he goes off gate two. On the inside position in red, it's Steve Bishop. Gate three in blue will be Nigel Sparshot. Well, Steve Bishop started his career as a Swindon junior in the old Sprocket side has produced so many top-line riders for the National League, but it's Lawson who's made the gaze on Bishop. And Sparshot getting edged wide by Kenny Brailsford, who's learning uh, his way around this circuit. Brailsford tucking into third place in yellow and black for Glasgow, who have a heat advantage here. Unless Sparshot can do something about it at the back of the field, Glasgow are going to win a heat here. And indeed, second place man in red, Steve Bishop doing his best. But it is Lawson who's made the gate once more. Third in yellow and black, Kenny Brailsford. And that, I must admit, is quite an achievement for the young Scott. He had uh, eight points at Eastbourne yesterday, which is uh, good form. I must say that 6.4 average does come from a fair proportion of home matches. But the way he has had seven at Milton Hall, along with that eight-point score at Eastbourne. So he certainly is pulling in some points along the way, although he has struggled at Long Eaton, for example, where he failed to score. Lawson going wide, and Bishop has now found the line. So indeed, Mr. Brailsford will be picking up a bonus point as well now. And Lawson slowing rapidly. It looks as if the bike has developed some problems. Can he hold on for the second now? That's the main question. It's the win in red for Steve Bishop. Second in white, just getting there. Steve Lawson, third in yellow and black, Kenny Brailsford. And fourth in blue, Nigel Sparshot. Surprise there to see Sparshot relegated to fourth place. That's uh, perhaps an indication of why he is down a little on average, down to only 6.6. Looks like when he makes the gate here at the county ground, he looks superb, but uh, struggling a little there where he didn't. But uh, nonetheless, a 3-3 drawn heat, and that makes the scoreline now X to 21, and Glasgow 9. So the Tigers stopping the rock there with that 3-3, and Kenny Brailsford becoming the second Tiger to beat a Bridge Falcon here tonight at the county ground. Well, one Falcon who had to miss a couple of matches this year was Rob Maxfield. He was injured at Edinburgh, and indeed missed a couple of matches on the uh, sides of the tour, and also the home match against Rye House. Since then, in successive matches against Hackney and Berwick, the latter being in the knockout cup, he scored 7 paid 8 and 10 paid 11. Three maximums recorded here at the county ground this year. 12 against Stoke, 10 paid 12, including two bonus points against Peterborough, and a paid maximum that never was against the luckless Barrow Blackhawks in the KO Cup. That fixture, of course, removed. Although the 58, that, that's a good question. Does that one stay in? Because that was a cup tie. <laughs> but the, all the league matches are being withdrawn from the records. Maxfield on the inside. Yellow on black is Edward Baldy. In blue, heading the front, Kevin Price. And in white, Brian Collins. Well, Brian Collins would have had a few matches here with the, the old Pool Pirates in his days on the south coast with the Dorset team. Had uh, two seasons with the Pirates following the closure of Wembley, where he used to ride. Not many Wembley Lions left riding, or ex-Wembley Lions. Brian Collins is certainly one of them. Moved with the side. He used to be at Coatbridge down to Wembley back in 1970. Certainly Glasgow Speedway with a checkered history in the past, racing at White City, Glasgow, years ago before that was demolished. Then at Hampton Park from 1969 to 72. Then a couple of years at Coatbridge, then over to Blantyre, and then onto the present Blantyre circuit at Craighead Park. Certainly seems a long way from Hampton Park these days, but at least Speedway surviving in west of Scotland. Although the Tigers are struggling to survive in this match, it must be admitted. Well, we've... Uh, got another 5-1 coming up here the, the leader in blue is Kevin Price second in red Robert Maxfield third in white Brian Collins fourth in yellow and black Edward Baldy and that's the way it finishes superb shot there of the right just coming across the line Kevin Price and Robert Maxfield getting the 5-1 for the Bridge Falcons and once more it's the case really if Lawson's not out there it's a 5-1 because it is here it gives us an overall scoreline now of X to 26 and Glasgow 10. Now, just in case you're thinking that uh, Glasgow are really doing badly here tonight, you've got to look at some of the other scores here at the county ground. Well, I mentioned a few of them against the top teams. They've also ridden against Peterborough. They beat them 55-23. And against Berwick in the league, they beat them 57-21. Stoke were humbled 59-19, along with those other results.
Andy Reid lines up for Glasgow now in heat seven, reaching the halfway point of this 13-heat uh, match. Next to him in blue off gate three, it's Mike Simmons. Simmons with two second places and two bonus points behind his partner for a paid total of six. Gate two in yellow and black, it is David Cassells. And on the inside in red, Colin Cook. What well, is Cook and Simmons pairing? Had a 5-1 in heat four. Reed and Cassells had a 5-1 against them in heat three. 16 points the lead as the Bridge Falcons break. It's Cook away in first place and Simmons going wide there and that's given Reed the chance to go through on the inside. Andy Reed, another one of those riders that's had a fair time touring the Northern Circuits before settling down with Glasgow. Did in fact split up his time with the Tigers with a brief spell also at Crate the Heat in the British League. Comes back in 1982 as a full-time heathen. Before that, a racer with the uh, Crew Kings and also the Ellesmere Port Gunners back in 75. Now it's, it's then Reed in second place. Way out in front, Colin Cook. Third in blue, it's Mike Sammons. Fourth in yellow and black, David Cassells. And Colin Cook has pulled up at the front. So it looks as if Glasgow are going to get another heat when no Cook is still going. Now, now we're going to get some drama. One lap to go and Cook has gone. The bike giving up the ghost on Colin Cook. Leading now, Andy Reid, second in blue, Mike Simmons. Third in yellow and black, just going past the man in red, David Cassells. So Glasgow once more set for a heat advantage. Let's see whether Simmons can change it. Simmons closing it all the time on Andy Reid. He's hungry for that win. But indeed, it is the man in white who holds on. Andy Reid wins, second in blue, Mike Simmons, third in yellow and black, David Cassells. And then that retirement for Colin Cook in red, indeed still just about under power, coming in for last place. But that engine problem for because Colin Cook gives Glasgow their first heat advantage of the evening. Heat 7 produces a 4-2 to the Glasgow Tigers, and the overall score now reads Exeter 28, and Glasgow are on 14, so Exeter have double the Glasgow score now. Exactly. Well, that brings to an end Colin Cook's maximum chances here tonight. He has now only three from two. Mike Simmons has six plus two bonus from three starts. Andy Reid picks up his first points of the night with that heat win, and David Cassells gets his second point of the evening. 28-14 then, after seven heats. Well, Glasgow bring out a tactical sub in heat eight, and it is indeed Steve Lawson in yellow and black. The number one confirming that, of course, as if Lawson would need any further identification. Well, so Steve Lawson takes his heat eight tactical substitution now in yellow and black. His partner in white is his regular partner in the team currently, Kenny Brailsford. Indeed, now uh, a new pairing being established, of course, with Brailsford moving out of the reserve berth, where he occupied the uh, start of the season. Riding in red and blue for the Bridge Falcons, Kevin Price in red, Michael Coles in blue. So with uh, the Glasgow Tigers 14 down, they need a tactical substitution now. Really, it's a question of getting the scoreline respectable rather than going for the win. I'm sure you'll agree, 14 points down with only six to go. That is a tall order for the Glasgow Tigers, particularly on a circuit like the county ground, which uh, I think even the most die-hard Exeter supporter would admit does have a fair amount of home advantage in it. But then again, Birmingham did come and win here in the league, so maybe a Fort Exeter is not quite as impregnable as some people might think. Mind you, one or two teams do find themselves beaten before they get here. Uh, you do have to get the feeling at times. The lineup for Heat 8 on the inside in blue, it's Michael Coles, next to him in white, Kenny Brailsford, gate 3 in red, Kevin Price, and in yellow and black, the man who hits the front, Steve Lawson. Well, Brailsford looking for the points, but I feel, yes, <coughs> the bells are ringing, not just in my head, they are around the circuit, because the red lights have an interlinked bell system here, and the race is stopped. So the riders will be brought back to the start. Referee Mr. Barnes waiting for confirmation that that's all four will be eligible. Just waiting for confirmation to come in. It was malfunctioning at the starting gate, I think, uh, the, the ruling of the referee. There's the referee up there, Mick Barnes. And his decision is all four riders back for the restart of heat number eight. And indeed, the two-minute warning being sounded, that flashing yellow light and the siren combining to blind and deafen the average supporter standing nearby. But course very vital and that's not an insult that is indication that two minutes time allowance is on its way 
If you're a newcomer to Speedway, by the way, when that two-minute time allowance is sounded, riders must be under power, heading towards the start. Inside, two minutes from that bell ringing and that light flashing. Otherwise, they're excluded and replaced by a reserve or a tactical substitute if uh, appropriate. Riders back at the start now for the rerun of heat number eight. And uh, a groove being dug there by Lawson, I think you'll find, at the start to try and get plenty of grip from the back wheel. And indeed it is Steve Lawson. The advertising on the leathers giving the game away once more. Gate three in red, it's Kevin Price. Kevin, 4 page 5 so far on his inside in white. It's Kenny Brailsford. Brailsford with 1 page 2 from 2. And on the inside in blue, it's Michael Coles. Well, at this time, the British Falcons have made the gates. Lawson pegged back into third place. Didn't get the start this time. Lawson going off the outside in this one. And indeed having problems now. Pegged back into third. Extra set for a 5-1. That will restore or move the lead. In fact, up to 18 points. Also, say restore 16. But of course, it's two more than that. It will be 18. But there is... Looks like there might be problems for Kevin Price. Does seem to be slowing down in second place. And bike trouble could be the undoing of extra as they try to chase a comfortable win here. Michael Coles leads, and indeed Price's bike has given up the ghost. Yes, he tries to get it going coming out of the turn, but there's no power there. Leading then in yellow and black, in blue rather, it's Michael Coles. One lap to go now. Second in yellow and black, it is Steve Lawson. Third in white, Kenny Brailsford. Steve Lawson after an opening heat win, now settling in for his second, second place in the night and maintaining that run that every time he has come out tonight Glasgow have split the points and coming in for the win in blue it's Michael Coles that's his second win of the night in two rides and second in yellow and black was Steve Lawson third in white was Kenny Brailsford with Kevin Price retiring with engine trouble so that's two heats now since Extra have had a 5-1 Glasgow keeping the fight going they're 14 down now with five to go it's Extra 31 and Glasgow 17 so Kevin Price remains on 4 plus 1 bonus. Michael Coles moves up to 6. Kenny Brailsford now has 2 plus 2 bonus. And Steve Lawson has 7 points. We now come up to heat number 9. On the inside position in blue, Nigel Spar shot. We would have had uh, a closer shot, I will tell you, of the start line. But for the fact that the referee is insisting that our cameraman does not occupy the position where he could get you that with those pictures. So unfortunately, we can't produce our usual service across the starting line. So uh, we're able to most transfer here at Exeter. Referee Mr. Barnes is being rather strict in the matter. In red, it's Steve Bishop. In heat number nine, Bishop partnering Nigel Sparshot here. Bridge Falcons 14 points up. In white for the Tigers, Brian Collins. And in yellow and black, it will be Andy Reid as a tactical substitute. So uh, Edward Baldy's ride here being taken by the Glasgow heat leader. And one of only two Tigers to win a heat here tonight. Read the winner of heat seven after Colin Cook had those engine problems on Glasgow's only heat advantage of the evening so far. A 4-2 in heat seven. Well, now the Tigers find themselves 14 down with five to go. Mathematically, they can still do it. And indeed, taking gate two in yellow and black will be Andy Reid. On the inside position in blue, trying to blot out the memory of that zero in his last ride. Nigel Spar shot. Gate three in red, Steve Bishop. And gate four in white, it is Brian Collins. And the race is underway with the tapes going up and extra with the inside positions. Are they going to make the break? Yes, indeed. Beautifully stylish team riding going into the turn there. It's Bishop in front, Spar shot second. Third in yellow and black for the Tigers, Andy Reid. Brian Collins at the back. So extra set for another 5-1 here that will virtually sew things up. Spar shots tucking in in second. A disappointing ride last time, but uh, back to his true form here. But Andy Reid unable to do anything in third place. It looks like a comfortable 5-1 for the Bridge Falcons here in heat number nine. So Steve Bishop confirming that he certainly is a power to be reckoned with around the scouting round circuit. Nigel Spar shots had four maximums, indeed no way. Just looking down my list, it is four maximums this year for the Bridge Falcons. Full maximum against Hackney, full maximum against Stoke, paid max against Berwick in the league, 
and a paid max against Ryan House, so he does know his way around the circuit in his first season with the Bridge Falcons. And indeed, all riders in the Exeter team tonight, barring uh, Mike Simmons, have had maximums this year here at the county grounds. Coming in for the win in red, it's Steve Bishop. Second in blue, Nigel Sparshot. Third in yellow and black, Andy Reid. And fourth in white was Brian Collins. A 5-1 heat win then to the Bridge Falcons in Heat 9 makes the scoreline Exeter 36 and Glasgow 18. So we're back to the old 2-1 to one ratio. Exeter with double the points of the Glasgow Tigers with four heats to go. That score once more, Exeter 36, Glasgow 18. Bishop now with eight plus one bonus. So he's one right away from a paid maximum. Nigel Sparshall with five plus one bonus. Brian Collins is on two. And Andy Reid is now on four, and there's a monkey on Dick Barry's shoulder. Well, Dick is standing in tonight, actually, for uh, Bob Radford, who is indeed ill. And it is a strange experience, I can assure you, to be down in Devon, having a Scot announcing with Scots as visitors. It's even stranger when he's got a monkey on his arm. Yes, those of you who watched last year's meeting at Poole, at Weymouth, rather, against Glasgow, may remember that uh, that monkey took a starring role in the closing stages. Its, uh, its name tends to vary all over the place, but uh, a certain degree of notoriety earned, as you can see. Uh, there might be a clue about uh, what Dick Barry's, Dick Barry's relationship with the monkey from that shot. I think we're giving the game away there. But uh, Dick picked that uh, puppet up in uh, Tennessee, I think, in National Tennessee, when he went over on one of his many jaunts over to the States. Of course, those of you living in Scotland will be more than aware of Dick's uh, prowess on the radio for the various uh, local radio stations up there, and his country show for Radio 4, apart from that, top mic man on the Scottish circuits around there, uh, or rather over the years. And indeed, in recent times, has even been uh, on the radio mic at Oxford for the World Championship events. So it's certainly all going well for Dick Barry and, at the present uh, time. I suppose that with Andy Reid having two races in succession, it will allow everybody to have a little extra time. I brought this fellow down to see you again. Actually, he brought me. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. uh, he just came because he knew it was on cable television. <laughs> There's no other answer to that. Well, they're watering the circuits now here at the county ground, which, of course, does bring into line one of Dick Barry's favourite uh, pastimes, that is the sport of tractor racing. Those of you who've seen Dick around the circuits will understand that one anyway. Two tractors going back into the pits here at the county ground, waiting for race number 10 to get underway here. And uh, the monkey's making a, a friend there on the terraces. It's a lovely excuse, isn't it, when you think about it? <laughs> Rumour has it now that Dick... Uh, <laughs> Yes, apart from, uh, I wonder if the referee saw that one. That's, I don't think that's in the uh, manual for announcers. There are rules, you know, for announcers. <laughs> anyway, uh, Dick with the monkey, getting a, yes, even getting a comment, from, a shake of the hand from the referee. Riders now coming to the start after that brief interlude. And this race coming up is seat 10. On the inside in red, Robert Maxfield, gate 2, yellow and black, is programmed David Cassells, and indeed it is, off gate 2. Waiting for the other riders to arrive at the starting gate. Off gate three in blue, it will be Kevin Price. And off the outside in white, it will be Andy Reid. Andy with uh, two successive rides, therefore being given a little, little bit of extra time to come out of the pits and join the riders for heat 10. 36-18 is the score, and that does mean Exeter are 18 up with four to go. So Glasgow now do need a statistical freak to win this one. They would need... Three five mils and a five one. Pretty rare, I'm sure you'll agree. Nonetheless, the name of the game here for many visiting sides of the county ground is to hit 30 points. And indeed, looking down the list this year, apart from Birmingham, who of course won, not many sides have done it. In the meantime, there in white, it's Andy Reid coming out from the pits, just about beating the two-minute time allowance. Going back to the subjects, those that have hit 30, Rye House have had 30, Poole had 32 in a challenge match. But uh, not a lot of sides do it. Middlesbrough got 30 in the league match. So if Glasgow could do that, they could call that a moral victory, I'm sure. Andy Reid coming around, getting plenty of air under that face mask. It was over 75 degrees Fahrenheit in Exeter City Centre today. And I don't think a lot of the uh, heat has gone out of the air now because uh, it's quite muggy. Yes, well, Kevin Price unimpressed there with the monkey. Uh, for those of you that uh, don't feature too strongly in watching Speedway, reading about Speedway, probably won't know about the relationship between Kevin Price and Dick Barry. And those of you who do know about Dick Barry and Kevin Price will have probably heard enough about it. Suffice to say that when Kevin Price arrived at Glasgow and Dick Barry was doing his 
job around the circuits, Mr. Price promptly flattened him, accidentally, I hasten to add, with the bike, and therefore had a shirt afterwards with I run over Dick Barry. Is that an achievement, one wonders? In red, Robert Maxfield. In blue, Kevin Price. In white, Andy Reid. In yellow and black, David Cassells. In heat 10. And next to off for the 5-1. I can tell you, when these riders go out wide, they've got more than just a couple of thoughts in their mind because that fence is solid, I can tell you. Of course, with the crowd being right up to the uh, fence, you do see that there is a usual zone, and that is the problem uh, over the uh, starting line shots because it's difficult to actually get those without going into that uh, neutral zone where no one is allowed, no man's land, certainly. You can just about see it there on the uh, straight view. But uh, you do have to have a solid fence to stop those bikes going through into the crowd on a track like this. And indeed, X is just cruising round now. They are the length of the straight, virtually in front of the third place man, Andy Reid. It's Kevin Price out in front, missing Dick Barry this time, who has retired to a safe place. Less than one lap to go now, and then you see the gap down to the Glasgow Tigers. So Kevin Price first, second is Robert Maxfield, third in white, Andy Reid. And fourth in yellow and black, David Cassells, and that is the way it's going to finish. Across the line goes Kevin Price in blue. Another 5-1 for Exeter, and there is now no doubt whatsoever about the result. Exeter take the two National League points here tonight at the county ground. A 5-1 then in Heat 10 makes the score with three hits to go. Bridge Falcons 41, and Glasgow Tigers 19, 22 in it with, as I say, three heats remaining. Rob Maxfield is now on six plus two bonus, that's three second places. Kevin Price closes his account with seven plus one bonus, including a retirement in his four rides. Andy Reid now has five points, and David Cassells has two. Well, it's 11 years now since Steve Lawson was the non-riding number eight for Workington, touring the country looking for rides, occasionally getting them as the, uh, the old Comets were using ride replacement. He's certainly come along since those days. Been with Glasgow since 78, and the top man all the way through. Riding in red for the Bridge Falcons, Colin Cook. And Colin taking the inside gate this time. He's had paid maximums along the way against Stoke and Barrow in that cup tie. And a full max against Middlesbrough. Recent scoring, nine paid 11 against Berwick, nine against Hackney, and only six against Rye House. Bit of a surprise to see him down so low. 162 points so far this year, including four bonus. Quite a haul for the man in red, Colin Cook. Next to him in yellow and black, it's Kenny Brailsford. Gate three in blue, Michael Coles. Gate four in white, the man who will be excluded by Mick Barnes. One would expect Steve Lawson touching the tapes there, clearly. And the penalty for that is quite simple now in Speedway. You touch the tapes, you're out of the race. So we await a reserve now to come out in Heat 11 to replace Steve Lawson, guilty of that cardinal sin in Speedway now of touching the tape. Mick Barnes going for the very straightforward decision there. The rules state it, a rider who touches the tapes shall be excluded. That's the ruling this year. Well, there is the replacement for Steve Lawson in white. It is indeed David Cassells. Now, as I remember it on a recent case, it was shown that a rider who is excluded for touching the tapes cannot be replaced by a tactical, but a rider who is excluded for two minutes can be. Well, whatever the ruling is, uh, a tactical substitute is being used. My memory for the rules might be a little vague there, but I do seem to remember that a tape exclusion is rule 202 in the rule book, for those of you who uh, get into things deeply. And uh, the, ta the tactical substitute isn't allowed. Well, uh, David Thompson, the Glasgow promoter, who does so much to keep, Sc to keep Western Scottish Speedway alive, seems to be... Uh, a little dissatisfied with something. He's been on the phone to the referee. David known up there north of the border as DLT. That's a nickname coined by a certain gentleman. Who, well, I'll give you a clue. He's got a monkey. Anyway, David having a few words with uh, his namesake, David Cassells. The tactical substitute in white. He's having problems now with the bike. Two minute time allowance sounds. And he's got 120 seconds now to get that bike underway. So, now waiting anxiously for the Glasgow team and supporters for that engine to fire. Cassell's being pushed away down into the turn. And it looks like the bike is now running. As I say that, you see Brian Collins just in the background there. He brought out a spare bike for David Cassell's to ride and indeed is taking it all the way around to the start just in case the bike fails on the way. 
and now behind that post now coming through David Cassell doing a passable impersonation of a greyhound I can tell you that bit of greenery on the inside of the uh, speedway track is not only the uh, it's not only a rugby pitch for the Exeter Rugby Club but it's also a dog track just on the outside of it you can see the starting traps in the background very unusual to see a greyhound track on the inside of a speedway track I'm sure you'll uh, agree it's quite common to see them on the outside but uh, this is rather unusual I do hasten to add that they do remove the air rail for rugby matches either that or uh, you just imagine it couldn't you the uh, forward going over the tr for the try then get getting carried around for 300 yards with the hair so it's good to see another multi-sport stadium, of course. It does all help things generally. Of course, this is really the home of the rugby club here in Exeter. And as if to prove it, there are the posts. Very, very high posts. I'm sure you'll agree. I don't know if my memory says all right, but uh, I do remember something about them being some of the tallest in the country. I don't know, anyway. Certainly no doubt if uh, there's very high conversion there. Well, converting now over to Speedway. Riders leaving the start. You see the long run down there into the first turn, and it's the Bridge Falcons who are first into it. Michael Coles leads. Second is Colin Cook. Third in yellow and black, Kenny Brailsford. Fourth in white is David Cassells. And Cassells struggling somewhat in fourth place. And that question over the kicking wheels, you might say, is uh, rather academic. Brailsford going wide there, bringing up the uh, top surface. It's not Red Shale here, of course, at the county ground. It's the uh, granite dust more commonly found on the larger tracks. And Michael Coles loving every second out there. He's already had two wins, heading home for a reserves maximum now. Colin Cook lifting somewhat behind him. Cook in second place then. Third in yellow and black is still Brailsford. And a good way back now is David Cassells. Steve Lawson's presence greatly missed here in heat 11, I'm sure you'll agree. That's a tape touching rule, one of the most controversial at Speedway. And uh, we've seen maybe a little of the cost of it here in Heat 11. It's a comfortable 5-1 for Exeter coming off the turn. Coming in for the win, his third of the night, Michael Coles. Second in red, Colin Cook. Third in yellow and black was Kenny Brailsford. Fourth in white, the tactical substitute, David Cassells. A 5-1 Heat win, the third in succession, and indeed looking down the notes, the seventh of the night in 11 races. Makes the score with two heats remaining, Exeter 46 and Glasgow 20. Michael Coles, I repeat, has a reserves maximum. Three wins out of th three programme drives. Well, diverting from the speedway once more, as you can see, the monkey has gone and uh, been replaced by a parrot. I don't know when Dick's going to have his leg off to go with the parrot. Anyway, well, those feet belong to Nigel Sparshot. Highly notable leathers, of course. He goes for that flame effect. The colours have changed over the years, but uh, still very stylish pair of leathers I'm sure you'll agree so it is Nigel Sparshot going off the inside gate position in blue he's got five plus one bonus a win a paid win and the last up against him in white it's Brian Collins Brian with two points from three starts coming up to the line as well now in red it's the uh, Bridge Falcons number one Rob Maxfield three second places so far and Rob living in the northwest in the Altrincham, Altrincham area, I think you'll find. It is notable when you think about the problems that Exeter had in the British League last year with getting riders to travel. You've got Maxfield, who lives in Cheshire. You've got Sparshot, who lives in Kent. And you've got Colin Cook, who lives in Ipswich, uh, who lives in Ipswich Suffolk, or that area. They can all travel. That uh, maybe suggests something about the National League these days compared to the British League. They couldn't get the riders in the British League, but they certainly can get the long-distance men in the National. And, of course, a blend of youngsters locally. Well, it looks like we've got a race here from the man in yellow and black, Andy Reid, but he's being edged back, going down the back straight. Bridge Falcons getting the first and second. Sparshot first, second in red, Rob Maxfield. Third in yellow and black, still in with a chance, Andy Reid. Fourth in white, Brian Collins. So Exeter with a 5-1, going for the fourth successive maximum. And indeed, if they keep going with the maxes, they'll get 56-22 as an overall score will be a little above average and for Glasgow a little below average in third place Andy Reid having a struggle though to keep up with the two Falcons and Brian Collins well out of the picture so Bridge Falcons in for another max here Nigel Sparshot if only for that zero in his second race if not for that he would have been on a paid max here 
second man in red, Rob Maxfield, beaten only by Steve Borson, other than his partner in this meeting. They're coming in for the maximum heat win. And there it is, coming off the final turn, it's Nigel Sparshot who wins in blue. Second in red, Rob Maxfield. Third in yellow and black was Andy Reid. Fourth in white was Brian Collins. So we have another maximum heat win of 5-1. And the score with one heat remaining reads X to 51 and Glasgow 21. 30 point lead now for the British Falcons. Certainly storming away in the closing stages here at the county ground. Interesting to note that Steve Lawson's not coming out for his final programmed ride here in heat 13. He's been replaced by his partner, number two, Kenny Brailsford. Brailsford with three third places and a zero so far. For a total of three paid five on the uh, third gate next to him in blue it's Steve Bishop gate two in yellow and black is another change it's Jeff Powell replacing David Cassells and on the inside in red it's Colin Cook well Steve Bishop chasing a paid maximum here now he's got eight plus one bonus eight paid nine from his first three looking for a win or a paid win here to get that max be his second of the season and a full max against Barrow in the Cups who in fact this will effectively be his first but having been removed and it looks like he's going to get it Cook, who's first, second in blue, it's Bishop. Third in white, it's Kenny Brailsford. Fourth in yellow and black, Jeff Powell. Well, the British Falcons certainly turning on the style, and you, you couldn't have a finer demonstration of how to ride your home track than the Falcons are showing in the closing stages of this meeting. A good way ahead is Colin Cook. Colin, with that engine failure, denying him a full score here tonight. Closing in gradually in white, though, is Kenny Brailsford. You can see why Brailsford's got that third heat leading status with the Tigers. He wasn't in, indeed included in the uh, declared top seven until tonight. This is his first meeting, actually, as a full-time member of the seven. He was, uh, in the past, deputising for injured riders, but now in on his own right with that heat leading status. So Brailsford's certainly developing this year. His partner in yellow and black is dropping a long way back now, Jeff Powell only his second league appearance of the season his first away from home coming in now for the win in red it is Colin Cook second in blue Steve Bishop Bishop getting the paid maximum third in white was Kenny Brailsford fourth in yellow and black Jeff Powell I will add Powell did ride at Eastbourne it is his second away league match of the year a 5-1 heat win then to Exeter where have I heard that before their fourth no their fifth in succession and the demolition job is completed the final score here at the county ground is Exeter 56 and Glasgow 22 and those people putting in the program tonight I think they've used a rubber stamp to some of these races that's not to take anything away from Glasgow because when you look at the scores that some other teams have set have established here this year they could always say that they have at least beaten the score that Berwick produced here in the league. Berwick only had 21 and their Scottish rivals Glasgow have got 22. But uh, things running pretty well according to the form book here tonight. Exeter, one of the most powerful sides at home of any side. They're still yet to win away from home though. That's uh, the one problem that's perturbing the county ground management. But for Glasgow, it looks like a season in the bottom half of the table. They've already dropped points at home. They lost at home to Stoke only a couple of days ago and have crashed heavily tonight here in Devon. And indeed, the day before this, they lost 50-28 at Eastbourne. So, uh, not a very successful time for the Glasgow Tigers at the present time. Repeat that final score. It's Exeter 56 and Glasgow 22 here at the county ground. Well, let's take a look through those uh, individual score charts now, starting with the Bridge Falcons. Robert Maxfield, eight plus three bonus points, four second places. Kevin Price had seven plus one bonus, a couple of wins and a retirement along the way. Colin Cook, eight plus one bonus, engine problems restricting him, stopping him getting a paid maximum. Nigel Sparshot, a zero, blotting his copybook there, otherwise eight plus one bonus. Steve Bishop getting his first league maximum of the year, ten plus two bonus. Mike Semmon scoring six plus two from reserve and Michael Coles nine points from three reserve rides for the Glasgow Tigers Steve Lawson seven points from four failing to come out for his fifth ride after being excluded in his fourth Kenny Brailsford four plus two bonus Brian Collins only two points there for the veteran David Cassells two points Andy Reid getting six and only one of uh, or getting one of Glasgow's only two heat wins all night Edward Baldy failing to score on his debut with two zeros and Jeff Powell getting one point from that reserves race otherwise failing to trouble an opponent so that's the situation a fairly bleak score chart for Glasgow but uh, 
In the end, a comprehensive victory for the Bridge Falcons by 56 to 22. Well, I have with me the uh, two team managers for Exeter and Glasgow, Ron Byford and Dave Thompson, nearest to me. David, a disappointing performance? Yes, it was. Unfortunately, we lost Martin McKenna last night and Jim Beaton on Friday night through injuries. And we were struggling. With Exeter's never been one of our favourite tracks. But uh, certainly, we gave it a go and I think we tried very hard. Ron, there were still a couple of bike problems along the way for the British Falcons tonight. Yes, that's right, quite true. A um, bit disappointed with the mechanical problems we've been having lately, but I'm sure these lads are going to sort it out and uh, you'll see us climb up the league now. You do have quite an advantage here, though, at the county ground, you must admit. Oh, yes, most definitely we've got an advantage here. Definitely. What about, what would you say, though, to uh, teams that are coming, the, the pair of you, regarding attitude to this? Because it's sometimes said that some teams are beaten before they get here. That's right, it's very true. Uh, Glasgow tonight weren't beaten before they got here. They put, they put in an effort. They're uh, just unlucky that uh, they got two riders injured. But certain clubs and top clubs within the National League come down and put no effort in whatsoever. They're beaten before they even turn the corner. Listen, it, it is, it, it, there's, when you look at it, OK, it's a long circuit, but you can hardly say that it's uh, badly prepared or a, a, a strange shape. No way. It's not badly prepared in any way at all. It was a good track tonight. We've no complaints that way. We were beaten by a better team. We've got good home advantage maybe at Glasgow. They've got it here. We came down to give it a go. I think we did fairly well with the team we were able to put out. And I certainly enjoyed the meeting. 